So a reading is your word to say, say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. I tell you, I tell you the truth. Whoever gives you a cup of water because you bear Christ's name will never lose his reward. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for giving us such a wonderful example to live by. For being an inclusive people who accept that not everyone is like us. Not everyone follows in the same way that we do. But Lord, you have brought us all together as one, one body in your word, one body in your church. And even those who are far away, even those who don't believe the same things we believe, Lord, if they call upon your name, they are your children. Lord, we thank you for making it so. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Let's continue to pray. And Father, we thank you for those who are near and for those who couldn't be here today. But even so, we are one family through your son, through the blood that runs through each and every one of us. That You have made us sons and daughters through the sacrifice of your one and only son. By him, we have all been made one family to call upon everyone in the world, to be your light that calls them. There's a verse listed there. How wonderful it is that they were able to work it out in the end. I thought maybe of talking about the Virgin Mary, unwed mother. But it just didn't feel like it had the spirit today. And I was thinking all week, there's something I need to preach about. I don't know what it is. And I kept praying, Lord, it's not Mother's Day. What is it? And late the night before last, I thought, oh, I've got it. I need to remember this because I'm not going to write it down. And I went to sleep, and sure enough, I forgot it. And I prayed, Lord, if that was a good sermon, please let me, let me remember it. And today in my YouTube feed, there was something about the writer's strike, and I remembered 
I was going to preach about the writer's strike. But it felt disingenuous to write a sermon in the middle of a writer's strike because you can't stand in solidarity with writers while writing. <laughs> but it's so important that we stand in solidarity with the writers, just like our reading from Mark says, if they're not against us, they're for us. These writers write everything we consume, everything that is for our values, everything that's against our values. They're all, all these different things, and we have to support them. because they're not against us. They write things that run contrary to our beliefs. They write things that run really for our values as well. I can't tell you how many sermons I've heard that have come from some, something that I've seen on television, something that someone has seen on television. There was an episode of Cheers and the preacher decided to preach on it that week. There was an episode of, geez, I don't even watch television anymore, but preachers draw their ideas from everywhere. And half the job is reading the scripture. Where we're actually, it does that it contains the writings of Moses. We know that the Torah represents some amount of oral tradition, some amount of priestly code, and some amount of writing that we don't know who to attribute it to. But without the work of dozens of writers, we wouldn't have scripture. Thousands of preachers either. People who stood up here and said, this is why this book is sacred. Sometimes even those who are far away from what we believe those who would say, this is why these traditions matter more than this book. But they still turned to this book when they didn't have an answer. When their traditions weren't enough, they turned back to those ancient writings. It's amazing to me, too, that while we think of this as the work of authors, most of what we think about is the work of translators and editors. You know, quite often um, when a passage is being translated, it has to be, the translator has to pick which language they're going to translate it from, which source material in that language. And then they have to make it make sense in English. It talks. I think that would cause a lot of confusion. It does. And it, so, so if you you're hearing this, um, I don't know. You better be wide awake or something because how are you going to integrate that into your mind? Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, I, I'm a, I'm like. I guess I, I'm a person that kind of likes order. Mm -hmm. And so when I don't see that or feel that order, I feel very um, shaky about it, you know? Well, I'm sorry. I chose chaos today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that's okay. And, and I'm not sorry, too, because I'm up here giving a demonstration. This is what it looks like to not have anything written down. Mm -hmm. It is chaos. And it's making me sweat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's making you sweat, too, yeah. because I'm not making a whole lot of sense. Well, no, it's because when you, you're, you're talking, you're preaching mm -hmm. and, and giving, I, you know, I, I kind of like get the, the, the totality of it. Uh, and it makes me um, wonder how they assimilated it mm. in that time, mm. in that time frame. So... It, it gets your your mind going and thinking. At least for me, mm -hmm. and and I, I can appreciate it. Oh, good. Well, 
like I said, this little bit of chaos, this is what it looks like to not have something written down. And if our writers don't get a working, a living wage, if they're not getting when production starts, they often have the writers come to the set and give input because sometimes you make the those changes on, on the fly. A lot of churches today are in the same position. We've had the same people leading the churches for decades. And they haven't trained anyone to take their place. And so old people die, they retire, they move. Um, California is not a very livable state. And so they move out of state when they retire and they take with them all that knowledge and experience. And the next generation starts and they try to lead and they struggle just like me with no written sermon. <laughs> I need someone else to preach because I get sick or I'm taking care of someone or Lord forbid, I get old and have to retire. <laughs> There's someone else. There's someone else who's ready to come up here and say, I have a word from the Lord. I have a message from this holy book. I didn't have a word from the Lord. Well, I did. But I didn't have a word from this holy book that we all love to read, because if I did, it would have been completely disingenuous. My word is we have to stand together. And we have to teach one another. It's not just that I have to come up here and teach everyone else. Because then I'm not really teaching everyone else. I'm not teaching unless I'm preparing you to do what I do. In other words, just like Jesus discipled his followers. And that word disciple mean, means that you learn to do everything the master does.